And now it's time for the single store session at the AI Deployment Summit, where we'll learn and see how to build a modern GPT AI app, thanks to the assistance from a purpose-built vector database. And our presenter this morning is Akmal Chandri, Senior Technical Evangelist at Single Store. Akmal, welcome. Thank you very much, Vance. Yeah, we're glad to have Akmal with us this morning. He is a first-class educator for AI and large language models for data and storage. 25 years expertise in enterprise IT. That'll be on great display this morning. In fact, he is a veteran of many cutting-edge AI firms, including Databricks and Heavy.ai, prior to joining Single Store. His session this morning, using generative pre-trained transformers, or what we all have come to know as GPT, AI, with your own data. You know, while GPT AI lets us do amazing things with public data, the real excitement will come when we can use it against our own private data within the company. In this presentation, Akmal is gonna show us how to build GPT AI apps using our own data, using Single Store DB cutting edge vector database. And because seeing is believing, we'll get a demo to show you how you can use GPT to build your own intelligent chatbot apps. So just a quick reminder before I hand it to Akmal for a really great and exciting session. You could download today's slides. Just click the big red button under the view screen. We've also got some other valuable downloads and even access to other great resources at the Single Store website directly available to you today with just one click. And we love your interaction. So to ask a question or give us a comment, just type in the submit a question box. And so Akmal, let me now turn to you and tell us about how to use GPT AI with our own data. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Vance. And thank you to the attendees for the, coming along to this particular session. So uh, as Vance was saying, I'm a technical evangelist at Single Store. So my role is to really help developers in particular, but more generally, anyone that's interested in our technology, learn more about it and be more productive whilst using it through building demos and writing content around it. So today in particular, the agenda is very simple and straightforward. So as you can see, a little bit of an introduction on Single Store itself. We'll say a little bit about vector databases and then focus on a couple of key points in terms of building a GPT app with your own data. And then I've got a couple of demos to walk through as well, just to show you some examples of how we can actually do this in practice. Okay, so seeing is believing, as they say, and that's going to be very valuable, I think. Okay. So a quick introduction to Single Store DB. So it is a real-time distributed SQL databases designed for modern applications and real-time analytics. So within the last decade or so, we have seen the emergence of these distributed SQL databases of which Single Store is one great example. And what it means is that the ability to bring the processing to the data, the opportunity to distribute the data and rather than having sort of monolithic architectures, you know, this gives you a lot of flexibility and freedom. Single Store in particular also has this concept of a unified data engine. So historically, it's done very well at transactions and OLTP workloads. But over the last couple of years, additional capabilities have been added to handle analytics and multimodal capabilities, which we'll look at very shortly. So the analytics is great. So this is kind of columnar, you know, some min, max, average count, these type of operations, which are really required. And that's OLAP. So it combines both of these capabilities in a single product. And that means, hence the name single store, that it's much, much easier in terms of just learning a single product. That's really helpful for developers because then you're not faced with the challenge of having to work with multiple database technologies and having to integrate them together. So if we take a kind of a high level 30,000 foot view of the product, I mean, this is a kind of a great summary. So here we can see the in-memory row store historically and the displaced column store, as you can see, and combined into a single product, okay? Along with other capabilities and features as well. And it's multi-model, which we mentioned just a few moments ago, okay? So relational, obviously, as you can see, in the uh, top here, but it supports other capabilities as well, such as geospatial, full text search, is based on Lucene, time series, and JSON support as well, as well as key value. And I've actually published content on, on a lot of these capabilities on various websites over the past two years or so that I've been with the company. 
It also runs in a number of different environments, as you can see along the bottom here. So let me just highlight that for you. Okay, so it could be on-prem. We could run it in a managed service environment. And today we're going to be using Amazon Web Services in particular for the demos. It could be self-hosted cloud and also containers. You know, there's a Docker container as well, as well if you want to try it out for yourself. Other things, so great integration with streaming technology, as you can see in the left-hand side here. Okay, so things like Kafka, for example, is there is a Kafka connector that we have and the ability to also integrate with sort of big data technologies such as Apache uh, Spark here. So again, lots of examples of that out there. Our focus very much today is in one of these particular capabilities, which is the machine learning. Okay, that's what we are going to really focus on. And uh, by extension, artificial intelligence, AI. Okay, so there are a variety of different ways that we can actually integrate and use Single Store with some of these machine learning software packages and tools. This is not an exhaustive list, but some of the more popular technologies and tools that we work with. I've mentioned Spark already. If you are a Python user, then obviously that's great news because all of these libraries in terms of the Python environment and the community, they work extremely well with Single Store. We have a Python interface as well. And over the last uh, couple of months, I've actually demoed this use of WebAssembly, WASM, which allows the core engine to be extended with additional capabilities. So things like sentiment analysis, for example, can be packaged up into a UDF stored in the database system. And then that can be used and treated like the database system as though it's part of its core environment. I mean, that's really true kind of extensibility and something that has been kind of talked about in the database world for a long time, as long as I can remember anyway. So today specifically, we are going to focus on two main things. So one of these is the single store vector functions, and we'll see those in action. And we can integrate with a variety of these large language models, of which today we're going to use a commercial offering, which is OpenAI. But equally, there are others, open source and Hugging Face in particular as well, is an alternative that could be used too. So let's move on and talk a little bit about vector databases then. So what is a vector database? Designed for nearest neighbor search query, okay? So this is a concept that's actually been around for a very long time. It's nothing particularly new. However, what is new is the interest in this space, particularly through the development of GPT technology over the last six plus months. This has really come to the fore. As it stands today, numerous speciality products that are available and really everybody else is adding a lot of these vector capabilities to their existing products as well. However, an important point, single store is a vector database as well. It is one of these kind of multimodal capabilities, and it's had that support since 2017 when the first vector function was added. So it is not something that we've just added yesterday, but these are mature, tried and tested features and capabilities that have been in the product for a number of years, already used by our customers in production environments. And that is one of the key strengths that we bring to this in the sense that we understand the technology, we have the capability, these are features and capabilities and tools that are built into the product as of today and can be used straight away out of the box. Some of the use cases for which some of our customers are using this vector capability, so what you could term as semantic search, so image search, for example, equally movie and restaurant reviews, and then other interesting applications such as audio search, and then looking for particular patterns in images as well. So here on the extreme left-hand side, you can see the fine burglar in video. So as human beings, we can recognize this, but how to teach the software what to look for. So this image recognition is a kind of a major application area and very useful for certain problem domains. Okay, so today, lots of these specialized vector database products but they're somewhat limited in their SQL support, no enterprise features, scalability and performance, and interoperability. So essentially, it is an area that's gaining some interest and traction. Like I said, 
there is a lot of interest in this space, particularly because of the development of this GPT technology, and therefore the ability to kind of store information for the long term, persistent, if you like, long term memory, if you want to think of it that way, that's become very important. How to create programs and processes and then be able to store the information and then reuse them again at some point in the future. And keep in mind that something like ChatGPT, for example, originally trained up to a certain date, September, I think, 2021 it was, perhaps February 2022 more recently. And therefore, anything after that in terms of its knowledge doesn't exist. As far as it's concerned, that is the future. It doesn't know about that. And therefore, we need some means to be able to teach it things and we'll see some examples of that very shortly. Equally, if you are not using vector database systems, you may be using these libraries of which here are some examples. These are not really designed with database capabilities in mind. CRUD, as we talk about it, you know, create, read, update, delete. These are the bread and butter of what a database system does. They don't have SQL support. SQL is very useful, tried and tested again, based on set theory, relational algebra, very powerful. You tell the system what you want, you leave it to go away and figure out the best way to retrieve data for you. So that's a very, very useful capability. And again, there is some question in terms of the scalability of these tools and the quantity of memory that they use. I mean, single store is very economical in terms of its performance and its capabilities. Okay, so some examples of the customers using some of these vector capabilities from single stores. As you can see, a variety of different domains and verticals there. And as I mentioned a little bit earlier, that the original vector support came about as a result of a financial customer requesting this. And this is one of the areas that we see one of the strengths that the product has and one of the verticals that it does really well in, in this particular space. Let's move on. Let's talk a little bit about taking this GPT and then how do you deal with the data that you have within an organization? You know, what can you do in terms of making some use of that, being able to ask questions and finding useful sort of nuggets of information, mining it and gaining from that? Here's a simple example, but a very powerful one that we've actually developed ourselves. So this is something called Squirrel. So this actually is custom designed for single store. It allows a user to type in requests in English. And then what it does, it analyzes documents, the GitHub repo that we have, blog posts, other information that is specific to single store to be able to help to answer that query. So I might have a particular query that I'm interested in asking of single store DB, and then I can ask Squirrel, you know, please give me an example of how I might write this query using the SQL syntax that single store understands, and I can type that in, and it will come back and give me an answer for that. So that is built on our own technology. It also utilizes this concept of taking existing data that we have, giving the user the ability to ask these intelligent questions, and then taking advantage of these large language models as well. So it's really proof of concept that really exists today, something we can demonstrate that we've done ourselves, and it's available and live and running and able to assist our users. And so the process of getting to that point of how to actually build something like this, it consists of a series of different steps. So really, we start off with the source material that we want to work with, and we want to split that up, you know, divide and conquer, make it into smaller kind of chunks, if you like, of information. From this, we generate these vector embeddings. Okay, that's the second step. And then we can store both the text and these vector embeddings within the database system. So think of the vector embeddings just as kind of a numerical representation of what that text actually is. We have a query. We want to ask the system. Now, AI can understand things to a certain extent, but being able to represent that in a kind of a mathematical way is much better. And again, we get these embeddings for the query that we want to ask the system. That's step three. And then finally, we try and apply that query embedding against the data that we've already stored in the database system in order to find what is the best or the closest answer that it can find in terms of the best match that we can get as a result of asking that query based upon these embeddings. Okay, that's the step four. And then once we've achieved that, we can actually use that as kind of input to the next stage, if you like. We can ask the large language model, whether that's something that's hosted internally within our organization, 
or if it's something external, and then it can give us a response back. And we'll see this momentarily in the demos. Okay, so that's the kind of the step five, if you like. So essentially, very straightforward in terms of the steps that we actually need to build a custom gen AI app. First thing, choose an appropriate large language model, whether that happens to be open source or commercial, find one that's appropriate for your situation and scenario. Choose a vector data strategy. Hopefully you see that the benefits of having a database system that can handle both vectors text and additional data types that we might want to ask SQL queries against that it is not just storing vectors, but giving you other enterprise capabilities and features, which will be very, very useful in terms of querying, as well as the SQL support that could be very, very useful for you. And then the last part essentially is how to take advantage of that. You know, once we've got everything stored and we've chunked everything up, created the embeddings, asking useful queries to get that useful information out, that is the final step in terms of the search and prompt. So visually, we could kind of see it like this, okay? So here we've got single store. And in addition to this, we've talked about some of these capabilities in terms of the analytics, the streaming data, maybe pipelines, perhaps you're using Kafka or streaming from other sort of technology into the database system. That's perfectly possible. And on the left-hand side here, you can see that you've got a variety of choices. I mean, we've simplified this a little bit. So it could be either a commercial large language model or down below here, you can see using something a little bit more open source there in terms of hugging face. Okay, so the second part there in terms of the vector data strategy, I talked about that a few moments ago. So using SQL has tremendous benefits, wide range of capabilities that it has. It's got a pedigree, it's got history, it's well-developed, well-understood, optimizers, one of these things that people have researched a lot over the years, and it's very efficient as well in terms of retrieving responses. And again, it's a question of you asking the system something that you want to retrieve and leaving the system to figure out the best way to do that, rather than you having to provide the detailed nuts and bolts of how you want that response returned. That is one of the you know, great benefits of SQL, and particularly with single story B. Whereas if you take a look at the left-hand side here, you know, answering simple questions like this, not working particularly well for a customer who was using a pure vector database system. And so one of the examples that I'll demo for you in just a moment now, we're almost there, is to take, say, a document, or it could be multiple documents. In this case, we work with a PDF document here. So remember, I talked about this concept of chunking and embedding. So we can do that here. We divide and conquer, actually split the document up into smaller parts. We store those. For each of those parts, we generate these vector embeddings. Again, we store these in the database system. All of these are held in our single store database system here. And then the user comes along and says, right, you know, I want to ask a query. I want to be able to interrogate that data. And so in this case, in terms of the demo, we are going to use a notebooks as the app that connects to the database system. The database system does a search. It finds the appropriate documents that match that particular query. And it gives us, if we want, just the top best answer. That can then form input to the large language model. And we'll see an example of that momentarily. And then finally, we can deliver an answer from there back to the user. And we'll see how to extend the kind of the knowledge, if you like, of the LLM as well. Okay, so here you can see an example where I am taking some data. This is using the OpenAI. So I'm using a couple of their models here, as you can see. So the text embedding model and the GPT model. Okay, so these are pretty standard. I need to input my OpenAI key, which I've done here. Okay, previously I prepared this, as you can see. And then I want to ask the system a particular query. And what I'm asking OpenAI GPT is this question here. Okay. Who won the gold medal for curling in Olympics 2022? Okay. That relates to the Winter Olympics in 2022. And the response it comes back with, it says, I'm sorry, as of my last update in February 2022, Okay, let me just highlight this. There we go. 
the Winter Olympics have not taken place. So as its knowledge is limited to a certain point in time, it doesn't know anything that you ask it beyond that. And so very helpfully, it tells us, I don't know, because my knowledge is only up to this point. You're asking me something. I haven't got a clue, and therefore I can't help you. So what we can do then is we can give it some additional information. So if I just go down here, all I'm doing is downloading a file from Wikipedia, which contains information about the 2022 Winter Olympics. And this is actually from OpenAI. This is one of the data sets that they very kindly provide. And already they have created the vectors, the embeddings for this. So it's not something that we have to do ourselves. Very helpfully, it's provided for us. We then take that file and we can take a look at the structure. So here you can see that, although it's a little bit compressed, I mean, you get the gist of this. You can see that here's the text column and here's the embedding column. So for the particular text of each row, and this goes on for 6,059 rows and two columns, as you can see here. And once we have this, we can simply create a table within single store to be able to store this which we are doing here. And we just need two columns, although we are creating a primary key as well. So we've got text to store the text, literally, and the embedding, which is of a blob type, which actually stores these vectors inside. And once that's done, this process here just iterates through one row at a time, storing each row into these two columns. Okay, and a little bit of magic that's happening is because of this, this thing called JSON array pack, which is one of these vector functions that single store supports. The point to remember here is that this is using the SQL interface, as you can see. However, you could do this programmatically as well. You don't have to use this particular interface, but this is one way to demonstrate capabilities, if you like. So we're doing that. We're storing both the text and the vectors now in single store DB. And then finally down here, we're preparing ourselves to do this kind of semantic search, if you like. So that particular query that I asked in terms of the winter 2022 Olympics, essentially what we're doing is just converting that into a set of vectors as well, asking the system to retrieve the best matching results that we have. And once we do that, here you can see the results coming through. And so the best matching answer here, if you like, I mean, if it was 1.0, that would be a perfect match. But the score here is 0.879, which is the top answer that it's able to come back with. And you can see the results here. Well, it's got some data here in terms of the 2022 Winter Olympics. So it's searched, it's found this particular set of answers, and we've ordered them in terms of this relatedness value. So as we go further down, and it's just giving me the top five here, okay? So you can see the text portion of this is quite a lot, but the relatedness value is coming through each time here. And what we can do then is say, well, okay, based upon all of this that's been returned, let's take the best answer that we've retrieved here, and we can teach GPT, give this additional information to it, to teach it about the Winter Olympics, and then ask it that question again, and to see, has it learned? Is it able to utilize that information for us? And this is all we are doing down here. So at the bottom here now, when we ask it this question again, specifically who won the gold medal for curling in Olympics 2022, it has enough of a context and enough new information to give us the answer. It says here, in the men's curling tournament at the 2022 Winter Olympics, the gold medal was won by Sweden. So you can see now that although its cutoff point in terms of its knowledge was limited previously, we've been able to take some additional information, store that in the database system, use that database system then in terms of the values that we have there, the embeddings that we have here, to extend the knowledge of the GPT. And then we can ask that query again. And now it has this additional information of which it can utilize to help us answer this query. And then if you think about it, the same techniques, exactly the same process can be applied for information that you have within your organization. So here you saw one example. The key thing to remember here is that because we are using an external vendor, the data are leaving our environment, going to open AI, being evaluated and the response is sent back. 
it is important not to use this for sensitive information. There are other solutions are available where you can actually have something hosted within your own environment inside the firewall. But this is a case where we don't have anything particularly sensitive. There is no personally identifiable information either. This is all public domain. So this works really well. And very quickly then, let me show you another quick example here where we're using a tool called Langchain, which is a framework which allows us to do that task easier. So we are taking a PDF file that exists, simply downloading this. So here we are then using this to chunk it up into 2000 characters. And as you can see, it tells us it now has eight pages worth of information, which is around about, if you divide 13,000 by 2000, you'll get that as the sort of even number in terms of the number of pages. Finally, we enter our open AI key. We get these vector embeddings. So literally in a couple of lines of code, you can see it's created the table for us. It's storing the text and the embeddings for us as well. And it's done all the hard work and not a single bit of SQL inside here, as you can see. Okay, so the framework handles all of the access for us. It abstracts away all of the nitty gritty details in terms of getting things in and getting things out for us. And that's very helpful. So for us as developers, this is a real time saver. And so finally, we can ask this question of it uh, based upon this particular document. And the question happens to be, I mean, this is from a long time ago, but will object-oriented databases be commercially successful? So this was a database technology that was very up and coming during the late 1980s and early 1990s. And so when we asked this question, the best result that it was able to find based upon the document that we've stored, it returns to us here, as you can see in one page. And then finally, we can then take this information again and then extend, if you like, the capabilities of the large language model and then say, well, your role, you LLM, you are now going to be a helpful assistant and I'm going to ask you this question. And here is a bit of information that you can use to help answer that. Will object-oriented databases be commercially successful? And it comes up with a response at the bottom here, which essentially boils down to no. I mean, it says that, yes, it's been useful in some niche applications, but overall doesn't seem to have really garnered a significant market share, which is actually correct. And that's the uh, observation that we've seen from here. So you can see these two examples that demonstrate how we can extend the capabilities of the LLM to be able to help answer questions on the data that we have. And again, in this particular case, because we are using an external vendor in order to send the information there. This PDF document doesn't contain any PII or anything sensitive, so that's absolutely fine. But just be careful if you are working with documents that may contain additional information. Okay, so just to summarize then, you can see it is very easy to get started with single story B. Literally within two minutes, you can create an account and be up and running. If you have some SQL knowledge or if you come from, say, MySQL, because product is MySQL wire compatible, you can get started immediately. You can be up and running, writing code, you know, creating these workspaces and interacting with the database system straight away. Single store integrates with commercial and open source software very effectively, works extremely well with open AI. Hopefully you'll see through the demo that I just showed you. And equally, if you want to use some open source libraries, open source LLMs, you can utilize those as well. I mean, the embeddings will be stored regardless. It's not concerned about the source of the data, but the system can handle any particular source. Using these two technologies together, very powerful combination for developing these Gen AI apps. Proof is in the pudding, and so we've actually done that ourselves using Squirrel as an example. And the other point to mention, as I said, is that vector support within the product has actually been around for a very long time, since 2017. So it is mature, tried and tested, used in production environments already by customers, and so therefore, with this advent and interest in sort of GPT technology, it is something that can be utilized out of the box and is available today. Obviously, there are some additional engineering and product roadmaps relating to vectors, which will come along in due course. Watch this space for developments there.
Well, thank you very much. And then this concludes the formal part of the presentation. So I'll now hand control back to Vance for questions. And thank you. Akmal, great. Wow, what a great session and what a great couple of demos. Really put all that information about Vector Database in context so we can all visualize it. And you really triggered some interesting questions. So with your permission, let's ask some questions. Great, absolutely, Vance. Thank you. You know, first off, Akmal, for those folks that are not familiar with Vector Database, but certainly have lived in the SQL world for a long time, talk about what you're seeing about why Vector Databases really help GPT access unstructured data better than using a traditional relational database. Yeah, so I think the key point there is that software doesn't understand sentences, English particularly well. I mean, natural language processing has been around for a while, but essentially with these vectors, what you're simply doing, it's just a kind of numerical representation of what the text is. And once you've got a numerical representation, you can do interesting things with it. I mean, you can, if you like, map this out in what's called a hyperplaner. It's a space, right, where... You can then say, all right, are things similar to each other? For example, man, boy uh, are similar to each other. Okay, girl, uh, woman. Uh, you could have like king, queen, for example. Or you could say animals, cat, dog. So there is a way that you can look for similarities between data using a mathematical representation. And therefore, you can measure the distance between them, if you like. How close are things together? So particular breeds of dogs are obviously going to be very close together, whereas the distance between, say, cat and dog is going to be a little bit further apart. Yeah, I mean, they are animals, of course. And then you might think about, say, vehicles, trucks, cars, things like this. OK, but now if we can have a kind of a mathematical representation of that data, there's interesting questions that we can ask of it. So simply representing things in this way and being able to run these queries very quickly, it has tremendous benefits. Absolutely. And this really does kick off a really great conversation here, Akmal. So let's go one level deeper about this mathematically representing the data. And the question here says, I've heard to use a vector database, we need to vectorize the data and or convert the data into the vector embeddings that you mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. In single store, what manual work does that require? Or is any of this automated? Yeah, that's a great question, Van. So the thing is that within the demos that you saw that I used, it's automated. So it's not something that single store has to worry about. Essentially, we use external sources. So in this particular case, I was taking some data, for example, whether it happens to be Wikipedia information about the 2022 Winter Olympics, which already contains those vectors very helpfully from OpenAI, or in the second case where I took the PDF document, I simply divided that up into smaller parts of so text. Okay, it's still text. But then I sent that text over to OpenAI to create these embeddings for me, send the embeddings back to me, and then I'm able to store those embeddings with the text in the database management system. And again, because it's stored in the database management system, it's there for the long term. Effectively, it kind of acts like a long term memory for me now. It's not something I have to create over and over again. It's a one-time operation. I've created those embeddings. It's stored in the database system. And now I can access that and use that for future querying. Excellent, excellent. And so let's put in context, this is called the AI Deployment Summit, Akmel, and a lot of yeah. folks are looking to, in their brain, assemble the different pieces or componentry they need with a single store. Would yeah. you provide a reference implementation? Let's say that I'm so new, I don't even know what I need. Oh, yeah. Can you help me with some sort of recipe for building an AI app? Again, great question. Yes. So I have colleagues, solutions engineers, who work day in, day out with customers on these type of problems. And again, we're seeing a lot of traction externally with customers, both new and old, who are interested in utilizing this technology for some problems that they have. I'll give you a quick example. So just within the last day or two, I had a call with a longstanding customer. They've been using our technology for a long time. So they are interested in taking PDF documents. And so these are like tax documents, if you like. Okay? And currently they use OCR as the means to scan those and store them in the database system. But they're very interested in this Langchain now, which again, you saw through that example, you can 
just point it to a document or a folder that contains lots of documents, could be hundreds or thousands, and you can chunk these up automatically, store them in the database system, get the embeddings, and then be able to ask interesting questions or look for anomalies or all these kind of things. Awesome. Awesome. Akmal, you know, this has been fantastic. Time is just flying by, but I think we have time for one or two more. You know, you had a slide in there where you mentioned your partnership with AWS, and we've got a ton of yes. developers that are working with Amazon Web Services. Talk a little bit about what you're doing with Amazon, how Single Store works with the Amazon cloud infrastructure, and how AWS developers might actually be able to get a quick start to an AI app with Single Store. Here you can see that Single Store actually integrates really well with a wide range of Amazon tools and services. So at the core here, as you can see, we have the Single Store DBMS in the center of all these things. But around the outside here, you can see a wide range of services that we work with. So I mentioned streaming and pipelines. Well, actually, that works really effectively with S3 buckets as well. And so you might be storing lots of data in an S3 environment, for example, and we can happily connect to the source, stream that data into single store. If you're doing things like machine learning, SageMaker on the right-hand side here, let me just highlight that, okay, is another one of these technologies where we've actually published content in the past and demonstrated how you can utilize this with single store DB. And then you can see that there's other applications as well in terms of various databases that Amazon offers, such as Aurora and RDS, again, designed for some specific use cases. And we can integrate with those using one of these services, which is the AWS Glue. And again, this is just scratching the surface. Akmal, this has been fantastic. Time has just flown by. Let me squeeze this in before we go. I know a lot of folks are going to want to learn what's the next step, how they can get more acquainted with Single Store. What would you recommend as a best next step for our attendees? There's a couple of things that people can try. So if you're new to the technology, just create a free account. And I think you've provided the links already for them to be able to do that. Literally in less than two minutes, you can create an account. You don't need a credit card and you get $600 of credits. Now, if you're thinking, well, $600 is not very much. Actually, I've been with the company two years and I've still got credits left. So I've been using that account for building demos and articles and I'm still good. And so that's a great way just to get started in the cloud. Okay, no risk, nothing to install, just need a browser. Literally in less than two minutes, you can be up and running and explore the environment. And that's a great way to just get skilled up, get some hands on with the product. The other things to look at, obviously, the blog site is a great place to look at, particularly because we've published quite a lot of content in the very recent past that relate to vectors and vector technology, in addition to other useful things as well. So again, that's a great starting point to kind of understand what our thinking is in this space, why we think that we are the best solution, simply because we don't just do vectors, but we do lots of other things as well that enterprise customers want. So that's another great thing to do. And then essentially, if people are interested and want to get in touch with us, again, just team, T-E-A-M, at singlestore.com to reach out to us. Fantastic. Akmal Chandri, Senior Technical Evangelist at Single Store. A real pleasure. Great meeting you and great learning more about Single Store. And who doesn't love a demo? Really great to have you here. Thank you very much. Just a quick note before we go. Many of the resources Akmal mentioned are right here in the breakout room. You can click on them and take them away with you right away. You can also sign up for that free trial that Akmal mentioned. Just click on that link right under the view screen. And as you can tell, there is a ton of innovation going on at Single Store these days. We didn't have room for everything. Here's a slide that'll take you directly to the Single Store website. Download Akmal's excellent slides and all these links will be live. They'll take you directly to the Single Store website. Thank you again, Akmal, and audience, thank you for some great questions and really great participation.